our affirmation of faith, and remember how I talk about this, if as the world turns and time changes at approximately 11 a.m., give or take, all around the world when we hit that time, churches of all denominations receive, recite this creed. So when we recite this creed, we are doing so with our brothers and sisters, not just in our church here, not just in every United Methodist churches, but in all traditions of the use of creed. So it's very powerful. And so we, I invite you to uh, join me as we united this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
bueno, ¿qué? Sobre un cachillo, esta lucecita la dejaré brillar. ¿Ok? Esta lucecita la dejaré brillar.
and our folks provide tons of financial and infrastructure support to um, do everything from you know immediate needs of survivors like food and whatnot, but even longer term um, to restore uh, phone service and electricity and those kind of roads and those kinds of things that people have to have to get around. So um, I imagine that we'll be receiving an offering for that um, disaster soon. I haven't heard word from our new bishop, but I suspect he will be calling for that. And as soon as that happens, you will know about it. Um, I would invite you to join with me together as we pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you have met us in the midst of our lives, may be busy, may be lonely, may be exhausted, may be worried. But whatever we are, you have met us as we are and have called us to follow you, called us to be different. To live somehow differently so that others might experience your love and your grace in their lives. Oh God, we know that you offer peace that passes all human understanding, and yet it is difficult for us to even fathom what that is like. So pour out your spirit as we worship you today, that as we do so in spirit and in truth, you might enter into our hearts in a new way. Empower us to live faithfully as your people and help us to say yes to whatever you call us to leave behind. Maybe, oh God, you call us to leave behind pain that we've carried with us for a long, long time. Perhaps it's anger we're called to leave behind or resentment. Perhaps, oh God, you call us to leave behind broken relationships from the past, and move on to different things. Perhaps, oh God, you call us to leave behind things that are comfortable for things that are challenging and move us out of our comfort zone. Whatever those things might be, oh God, we ask that you pour your spirit out on us again. Remind us that we are your people and that you will be with us every step of the way. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite our ushers today as they come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. And as they do this, remember that when you contribute to the church, you help out lots of things. You help out not just here at home, but far-reaching. And your gifts make a real difference in people's lives here in North Texas and also all around the world through um, World Methodist Service. And we're so grateful for that. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these gifts that we have received from you and that we now offer back to you. Help us to use them faithfully. Bless them, multiply them and empower us so that we might do our part to bring about the coming of your kingdom on earth. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.
setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus, Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give all the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. For the word of God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Go, 
sell all you own and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. I imagined the man jerked back to reality from his daydream and rewound the mental tape of what Jesus had just said. Hold on, did I just hear that correctly? He looked at Jesus' face, the disciples' face, and out at the crowd. By the looks on their faces, he could tell that, yes, indeed, Jesus did just tell him to go sell everything and give it to the poor. His mind was reeling. You know the saying, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Apparently that wasn't a phrase back then because Jesus went straight with the bad news. Uh, led with that. Um, so, um, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, when that happens, we tend to be so shocked by the bad news that we don't hear the end of the sentence. I think that's what happened to our rich man. He expected Jesus to put a gold star next to his name. And when that didn't happen, he retreated into his thoughts. He may not have even registered that Jesus was still speaking, giving words of hope and liberation. Jesus has just pointed out the rich man's greatest temptation, his hang-up. He may have even thought, how can this be? But the rabbi said I would inherit eternal life if I followed the rules. I worked my tail off day after day, year after year, to meet every requirement of the law. What is happening here? I thought this Jesus guy was the Messiah, or at least a great rabbi, but now he is saying crazy things. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. He checked out before Jesus finished the sentence. The good news that came after the bad news was, you will have treasure in heaven, then come, follow me. He walked away grieving as if tragedy had struck. The first half of the sentence felt like a tragedy. Our rich man left the scene never to be heard from again. And Mark leaves us hanging, we don't know. Perhaps he did eventually do what Jesus asked. Um, God is always ready and waiting with grace, no matter how long it takes for us to get our act together. And obey. Jesus redirected the man's question and told him how to enter the kingdom of God. The rich man had asked a question for his benefit. How do I inherit eternal life? Jesus redirected and gave an answer that would benefit the man and all of creation, the coming of the kingdom of God. This was a seismic shift in his understanding of the world order. It shook the foundations of the rich man's world. About two years ago, I received news that shook my foundation. For most of my life, I've had bad allergies and frequent sinus infections. I would get sick around the um, end of October, and despite antibiotics, allergy shots, allergy medicines, all of the nasal sprays and steroids, I stayed sick. I stayed sick until January or February. Um, I was tired of that hamster wheel. So I found a new doctor that uses a different method to test for allergies. These tests reveal that I am allergic to many foods, um, and all the good ones, gluten, dairy, corn, um, and even some of the ones that we think is healthy, avocados, mushrooms, lettuce, and green beans. There were at least 20 foods on the list, and I've since learned that my response to these allergens is quite delayed. Now that I know what to pay attention to, I can look back and see what uh, caused the problem. Um, but often, the sinus headache doesn't come until the next day. Uh, that's why I never realized how much food was contributing to my problem. Avoiding the foods that harmed me was incredibly challenging at first. I had to change all of my habits. I had to find new things to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and dessert. Especially dessert. I love eating good food. My husband thinks that eating a meal is a chore just to be gotten through, but I love food. I couldn't bear the thought of life without brownies, their fudgy gooeyness, or fresh baked chocolate chip cookie straight out of the oven, crispy around the edges and chewy in the middle. Was it even possible to live life without these treats? One of my favorite things 
is to discover a new bakery and try something delicious. At the time, one of my self-care practices uh, was to go to Panera on Friday mornings and work there. Um, I would get to uh, just have some different scenery, um, chat with the, the staff that I'd gotten to know, and I got to have my everything bagel with um, roasted red pepper cream cheese. What was I going to do for my self-care if I didn't have um, that thing? This was shocking news. It was the first half of a sentence. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. That day at the allergy office, I had a choice. I could walk away grieving, or I could listen to the end of the sentence and trust that the doctors, nurses, dietitians would help me walk this difficult road. We all have moments where we are confronted with making a choice to keep the thing we love if that is actually making us miserable, or trust that with God, all things are possible. I have found the one thing that was making me sick. Was I willing to let go to gain what I really wanted? For each of us, Jesus can identify that particular attachment or hang-up that prevents us from wholeheartedly following him. He will direct and empower us to set aside our hang-up to experience the joy of walking with him to enter the kingdom of God. With God, there's always a second half of the sentence. First, the bad news, then hope, joy, and liberation. In his conversation with the rich man, Jesus shifted the focus from a nebulous future afterlife to the sacrifices, but also abundant joys of living with God in the present. After the rich man walked away, Jesus continued teaching the disciples about how to enter the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is one of those big churchy phrases that's really hard to understand. Uh, we can't look at it or touch it. So what does it mean? But it is mentioned 64 times in the New Testament. 52 of those times are attributed to Jesus. So it might be pretty essential for us to understand. We find hints in the Lord's Prayer that we prayed earlier, uh, that we pray every week. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. So from the prayer that Jesus taught us, we learn that the kingdom of God is in heaven, and we're praying for it to be here on earth, too. In the kingdom of God, we have enough. We have our daily bread. We forgive and receive forgiveness. We are protected from evil and temptation. Native American theologian Randy Woodley has helped me understand what this might be. He says, in the kingdom of God, it's a community of creation where all things created are rooted in symbolic, sorry, symbiotic relationship with each other and with creator. I recognize the kingdom of God in moments of mutual benefit where everyone involved is grateful and joyous that they contributed and participated in the moment. Everyone brought something special to the table and everyone received something beautiful as well. I experienced this several years ago um, at, when I first started Project Transformation. We always end the summer with a celebration banquet. Um, and, um, sorry, I lost my place. Um, we always end the summer with a celebration banquet. I could prepare months ahead of time, um, but once we hit the summer, it is a two month long sprint. And so until this moment, it hadn't been the biggest fire to put out. We've been dealing with all the other day-to-day -day things. Until about three weeks before the banquet, I realized, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've got three weeks. I panicked. I needed to arrange a meal, donations of uh, plates, cups, napkins. I needed to arrange a performance by the children like we had this morning. Those things don't happen miraculously. Um, and I needed to have a presentation ready. I need to get a gift for the interns, all while doing the regular daily things. For mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. 
I began making calls and sending emails to our supporters. I feared that they would be put out and annoyed that I had waited until the last minute to ask. The night of the banquet, I walked into uh, the room carrying my dress on a hanger to change into later after all the hard work had been done. I was shocked, though, to see how much had already been done. The tables were set, decorations were hung, and there was a crew busily preparing dinner in the kitchen. The night went off without a hitch. The room was filled with people that I loved and the love for the transformation. We were served an amazing meal, followed by creamy strawberry shortcake. This was before I had the allergy test. Um, I was in awe over how well the evening went. People seemed to have genuinely enjoyed it. All evening long, people thanked me for allowing them to participate. I was shocked. It turns out that I wasn't taking anything from them at all as I had feared. Instead, they were grateful for the opportunity to share their talents in a way that honored God. In that moment, Jesus asked me to lay aside my fear and pride. I couldn't do it alone. For mortals, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. The kingdom of God is found in moments like this where relationships are reciprocal and each person joyfully contributes and receives. some of your opportunities. Um, again, all this is in the middle of your bulletin as well, but we want to highlight uh, what your opportunities are regardless. One that did not show up on announcements, but Nalene is the boss of me in, in many ways. And wants everyone to know, then I'll be there too. Choir Burgers will begin Sunday, February 26th, immediately following the 11 a.m. service. Come and join us as we prepare for our Easter, well, it'll sit on Palm Sunday in Tahoe, about our beginning Easter message. Um, uh, next, and uh, no, by no means least, <clears throat> the Big Event Grand Prairie. We are a part of our Grand Prairie community, and the great event, and the big event, is a one-day citywide celebration which volunteers are matched with service projects in the homes of people who need help. Our mission at JNC Grand Prairie is to love our neighbors by inviting, welcoming, connecting, growing, serving, and loving them. The big event is an opportunity to connect with each other and the community through service and love. Do you have friends who enjoy gardening, meeting new people, Considering inviting a friend or a group to join, you can sign up to volunteer through the church in the Narthex or through the link in our additional newsletter. The big event is Saturday, March 25th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Help us um, serve our broader community. Shrove, 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 Shrove Tuesday. Otherwise known as Pat. Yes, well, yes. I know that too. Trove <laughs> uh, Tuesday Pancake Dinner. The youth will be serving Pancake Dinner this Tuesday, uh, February 21st, in Wesley Hall from 6 to uh, 7 30 p.m. Pancakes Dinner. Please come and enjoy our great food and fellowship. Donations um, of pancake batter are still needed, and so that's. Uh, the kind that are just out of water. Um, this quick and a bunch of them. Please bring any donations to the office by 2 p.m. tomorrow. All funds raised go to uh, fund our youth group activities. 
And immediately thereafter, Shrove Tuesday is Ash Wednesday, this week, February 22nd. You have three times to choose from to receive your ashes. An 11 a.m. service at the Mountain Creek Retirement Center, a 12.30 p.m. lunchtime grief service in Baker Chapel, and then a 7 p.m. full 45-minute service uh, in the evening, also at Baker Chapel. And that's all I have. All right. So, uh, he's working off a list that's different than what you see. So, one of the things is uh, the, the service in the... Okay, let me start over. The service at um, Mountain Creek is at 10, not at 11. Oh. So if you get there at 11. Oh, did I say 11? No, you that's said. exactly what I've got. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, that's okay. No. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I understand. Also, through a request, even though we thought we were not going to do drive by ashes in the morning between 7 and 8, now we are. But rather than being over by Baker's Chapel, I'm going to be right down the steps here in front because of the traffic congestion with the school. So anyone who would like their ashes prior to work, I'll be there between 7 and 8 to do that. And uh, it's a wonderful service. If you've never been to one, I would really encourage you to come and be a part of that. Up here now, I've been addiction. Did the love no, well, Mom? I'm sorry. I thought I'm missing something. We are going to sing the best song. Where He Leads Me. This fits with the sermon perfectly. Where He Leads Me. Let's stand as we're able and we will sing together. Then I'll get the benediction. How's that?